Hello! The next uh, project in the Cornish workshop is this box of tricks which is a late 30s, possibly wartime, mutual conductance valve tester. As you can see it needs a little bit of work doing to it and I know for a fact that it uh, does need some replacement capacitors and resistors and a little bit of cleaning up. First thing we'll take out all the bits and bobs from the accessory slot. I'll sh show you these in a sec. These are the spare conversion uh, plugs so you plug these into here and then that enables it to um, test more modern valves than it was originally designed for. So if we take this type of valve for instance and put it in that'll fit into here and then that will fit into here. So we can we can test modern valves as well as the uh, the old pre-war and 40s valves. Which is a jolly good thing. Uh, other little bits of wires and bits and bobs in here. So I cut that out and we will get a margarine tub to put it in so we don't lose it, which is usually what I tend to do. And we mark that. Taylor 47A, which is the model and make of the valve tester. Not quite big enough, never mind. We'll keep two in there. And the small bits, that's what we think. Okay, so we first thing I'll give this a bit of a brush off. Get the dust out of the way. Now if you come through here and have a look at this, somebody's been uh, needing some very strong pairs of glasses by the look of it. It's been putting these um, labels on. I want to get them off first um, and when I've done that we'll come back and have a look at the inside. Well, I've tried the old um, lighter fluid and terps jobby. Unfortunately, they're stuck on too tight and hard. Obviously been on there for a long time. So what I'm going to try and do is use a hot air gun to soften the labels up and see if they will uh, peel off with that with the glue um, heated up and, and then um, take the residue of glue off with the lighter fluid. So here goes. Moving a bit, get some of this just to there, that's better. Okay, so that's all the labels off now, it's looking a lot tidier. Um, first, the next thing I want to do is take the lid off, which is fairly easy, it's just a, uh, just a um, slide off job. Put a bit of 
WD-40 on just to give it a bit of slip. And hopefully, with a bit of luck, it'll come off. There we go. Good. We'll do. We'll. Uh, I will restore the woodwork and, uh, when we've done the rest of it. But for now, we need to continue dismantling. I've taken all the screws out of the um, top surface and now I'm just going to quickly explain what a few of these things um, are for. This bottom section is a, a multimeter. The top section is the, top, is the section that tests the valves. So anyway, we'll lift this out now rather gingerly. so you can see the little bit of testing, preliminary testing I've done so far has, um, hasn't has shown any problems with this section of the uh, machine and up here we have a, a rheostat which is in very nice condition so that should again work fine so that's that and now we'll try and lift the main section out very gingerly so we don't want to break any components for a second. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll put the lid back on and put the box away and we can it'll be and we can restore that at a slightly later time. Okay, now the next job to do is if I can find my cutter we can cut these wires here now because they're color coded it'll be quite easy to match them up when it's being put back together and I'll solder on some connectors to um, rejoin them there we go so that makes it a lot easier now to work on Put that back out of the way. And we can turn this over and see what the underside is like. Right, well the first thing I can see is, if I get a pencil to point, if we see here, this resistor is burnt out and that one looks a little bit bubbly as well so that those two will probably need replacing or certainly need replacing. Um, the other things that will always need replacing when you're restoring this type of um, equipment is the old wax covered capacitors. They will always need replacing and there's probably three or four of those around here to do and also more than likely the old resistors will need replacing um, but apart from that looking around it all the wiring seems in excellent condition and the actual transformer that doesn't appear to have um, overheated or have any issues with it at the moment anyway just looking at it I'll put the multimeter on it um, in a while and um, we'll check it all out. So that seems pretty good. Excellent. Since the last clip I've done a, quite a bit of research on the various components in the um, tester. So I've got written down all the capacitors and the resistor values so that I can uh, replace it like for like. So that was a very handy uh, piece of information to find on the um, Vintage Radio Repair and Restoration Discussion Forum, which was a bit of a mouthful, but there we go. Um, I've transposed all the various resistor and capacitor values onto a photograph I've printed off of the actual tester. 
So we have the resistor values, the capacitor values, and resistor values again, I've written all down. So as we go along, I can take the information there, get the resistor and replace it, and then it's easy to follow the work in progress. Okay, so what we basically have to um, replace are the two burnt out items here, all the wax capacitors, um, some of the resistors um, I will check. Some might be okay, some might not, but um, if they're not within tolerance then they will be replaced. The other jobs to do is to clean the rheostats here so that they're making good contact um, which should be quite easy with some switch cleaning fluid. And then it's um, just a general tidy up and put it back in the box and we'll see if it's a, a goer or not.